Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Uh, welcome and welcome back. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing. Please keep motivating me by giving me stuff to react to, and I'll be very, very glad. So today I'm going to be reacting to Christians claim you must have the Holy Spirit before you can understand the Bible. I mean do that. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I hope you all are in the best state of health and iman. Today's video is going to be about the very popular Christian claim. Most of the Christians claim that you must have the Holy Spirit before you can understand the Bible. They usually use this as a defense mechanism most of the times when they can't prove their points. So let's head on to the video and listen to Sheikh Didat refute their claim. Right? Mr. Chairman, then... People, you too short, you like me. Please put the mic down, please. I would like to ask, uh, when a person becomes a cabinet maker or a carpenter, they are laws to obey and the principles before you can. You can't just take a piece of wood, otherwise you wouldn't know what to do. So the Bible teaches us that to interpret the scriptures, that uh, it's only by the Holy Spirit that we can interpret the scriptures. And uh, you can only uh, have the Spirit of God when you obey the God, when you obey the Lord. In other words, when I obey God's word, like for instance, you will know about Muhammad if you obey the Quran. So you can talk about Muhammad. Now, I just want to read to you. Yes, Aulet, you are putting a question now. Yeah, well, I just want to make my, my point clear. Yeah, in First, Second Peter, uh, chapter 1, verse 21. For no... No, you must look, speak into the microphone. <laughs> for no prophetic message ever came uh, just from the will of man, but men were under the control of the Holy Spirit as they spoke the message that came from God. And then uh, in the book of John, chapter 14... Uh, there's uh, 15. Brother, uh, could I no, ask, it, it what, is, yeah, but what are you trying to prove or what question would you like to ask? Wait, I'll ask you now. I know that you've got support, you know, there in the text. Yes. But, uh, could we get the question? Right, okay. The question is, if you become a, a bricklayer or a carpenter, you must, uh, do you have to obey the principles and the laws to become that? Or can you just become a bricklayer or a, or a carpenter? Robert, thank you very much. Can you answer me? Now, likewise, I would just make clear to you, you can't interpret God's word. If you don't obey God's word, then you won't have the spirit. So I would say then, any person that is not living according to the word of God, he's got no right to interpret the scriptures because here God says, it's only the spirit that will enlighten your mind and right, give you I, wisdom. I would, am I right then that if, uh, not to get into that part of the argument, taking your word without going there, if I'm a Muslim and I haven't got the spirit which you speak of, and the Bible is, as you say, for all mankind, will I then not be able to understand or interpret it? Well, you can have the Bible, but Christ said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't obey me? It right. is only those who obey God that have the spirit. Thank so you. I'll read further. Thank you, brother. I think your point, and I don't doubt your next text, it will only be supporting the same thing. But could the, we, for uh, time's sake, could wait, we please wait. go on? But I, I feel the no person minute. can interpret the word without the Spirit of God, see? So yes. if a person is not born again, right. then he doesn't have the Spirit. So he, either the devil will use him no, or he will talk things out of his head. No, I don't, I don't doubt your, your thoughts on it. I think we have got your, the picture. Yes. We will answer you. Could we go to the back, please? We'll only have three more questions after this, eh? Please. Now, Mr. Oh, we'll make it four because there are four standing. Could I excuse you, please, with the blazer? We'll have four more. Um, Mr. Didat? Did you hear that man's question? You didn't hear his question. You don't want me to answer. I heard his question. But then you don't I want me to answer. You okay, do not want me to answer. Answer him. Sorry for that. Answer him. I want to use open the This is an amazing situation. That our Christian brethren say that you must have the spirit before you can understand the Bible. And everybody claims to have the spirit. There are in South Africa 1,000 different sects and denominations among the whites. 1,000 different sects and denominations among the whites. And they all claim to have got the spirit. 
There are 3,000 sects and denominations among the Africans. 3,000. And they all got the spirit. And these 1,000 white denominations are all going in different directions. And they all got the spirit. The 3,000 African denominations, they all claim the spirit and they all go also going in different directions. Now how are we going to arrive at truth? Unless we use our God-given intelligence. Because the one man says, look, there is a trinity in the Bible. The other fellow says, there is no trinity in the Bible. One fellow says that when you take this piece of bread, it becomes the flesh of Jesus. When you drink the wine, it becomes the blood of Jesus, literally, in a mystical way. The other fellow says, no, it is metaphorical. Now who has got the spirit? I want to know. Which guy are we going to believe? And as soon as you ask the man what church you belong to, he doesn't own up. He's interdenominational, so you can't catch him anyway. As soon as you corner him, he say, well, I don't believe that. Look, what I have done, I have spoken for an hour and a half, simple, straightforward language, proving to you from the Christian scriptures that the thing that they are alleging didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. Christ was not crucified, he was not crucified, he was not crucified. An amazing thing, nobody is asking, questioning me on what I said, not one. Isn't it amazing? What is the Spirit doing to them? What does the Spirit do to people that you are not listening simple, basic English I'm speaking to you, I'm quoting you verses after verses, this is what Jesus said, and you don't contradict me. You want to say Peter said this, and Corinthians said this, and this guy said this. What is all this? What is happening to you? Where is the, why is the Spirit deserting people? I says, please ask me direct questions on what I spoke, and I'll give you a direct answer. There are more than 2 billion Christians around the globe and they are separated into thousands of denominations. According to a survey by the Center for the Study of Global Christianity, estimations show that there are more than 200 Christian denominations in the US and a staggering 45,000 globally. So why does Christianity have so many branches? Most mainstream Christian denominations and churches accept and claim to have the Holy Spirit. The difference is in how all the various denominations define their expectations and evidences of how the Holy Spirit is manifested in the life of a believer. So, you have one group who acts crazy and claims it's the Holy Spirit and another group denying the power of God and also claims it's the Holy Spirit. It is a known sickness for born-again Christians. Once a Christian becomes a born-again, he believes he is automatically filled with the Holy Spirit. An important point to note is that all these various denominations claiming to have and be inspired by the Holy Spirit for all their actions and beliefs are all moving in totally different directions. From amongst what these thousands of Christian denominations have disagreements on are basis for doctrine, creeds and confessions, inspiration of scripture, the trinity, the nature of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the concept of salvation, the original sin, the concept of atonement and the nature of Mary. So, let's talk about their disagreement on the concept of Trinity. First point to note is that the word Trinity is nowhere to be found in the entire Bible. So, it's very clear that it's not a biblical concept, but we'll discuss it for clarity. The mysterious doctrine of the Trinity has created divisions since the earliest days of Christianity and those differences remain in Christian denominations until today. Denominations like Unitarian Universalist Christians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Science, Armstrongism, Christadelphians, Oneness Pentecostals, Unification Church, Down Bible Students, Unity School of Christianity and the Church of God International all reject the concept of Trinity in their version of Christianity. All other denominations that accept the Trinity all have a uniquely different approach to it and different concepts of belief for it. 
You have denominations like the Roman Catholics. They believe the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet, they are not three gods, but one God. And they are co-eternal and co-equal. It is important to note that Jesus taught monotheism. And he is quoted to have said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 28, My Father is greater than I. That alone explodes the Trinitarian myth. So, saying a person must have the Holy Spirit before being able to understand the Bible should bring up some follow-up questions like, which Holy Spirit is recommended? The Holy Spirit of which Christian denomination should a person accept? We can therefore only resort to our God-given intellect to understand, comprehend, and fully grasp God's message to humanity as the Quran and Bible have taught. Assalamu alaikum. It's actually good to know that there's churches out there that uh, disagree or don't even or have removed the Trinity out of their way, you know. Uh, that's actually my first time hearing that. This is actually my first time. Uh, concerning having the Holy Spirit, I don't know. Because this is just when understanding the Bible. But holy books aside, what if, what happened those days if you ever took literature and you had to analyze poem? We had to um, write the meaning of that poem according to how we understood it. And at the end of the day, despite the different terminologies used to express how understanding that poem, um, we still gave out some sort of meaning for that, you know. So I, I don't know. Anyone can read the Quran and say this verse means this. Anyone can read the Bible and say this verse means this. So to have the Holy Spirit... To understand something i don't know does it mean everyone that has ever read holy books needed that holy spirit to actually fully understand something when how do you know you've got the holy spirit how exactly do you determine you've got the holy spirit that's something i'd love to know otherwise um this was an interesting video and yeah let me know what you guys think if there's anything you have to say please comment down below if you want me to react to something Comment it down below. I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.